What if we have the efficiency of the Snapdragon X Elite chips on an X86 architecture chip? That might not sound possible, but that is exactly what Intel did with the latest Intel Core Ultra mobile processors Series 2. Yes, that is the official name for this generation, which is also known as the Luna Lake chips. In another name, it should be the 15th gen Intel Core processor, but Intel doesn't use that nomenclature anymore. Anyway, I've done quite a lot of tests, and today we're going to show you what this chip can actually do. It's quite good, honestly, and I'm impressed in many ways. Hit that like button and subscribe as that will really help us out a lot. Now, let's talk about some specs. This is the ASUS ZenBook S14 UX5406S, which comes with the new Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, which has the new Intel Arc graphics 140V as well. Yeah, there are a lot of numbers and names. The new Luna Lake architecture actually brings out a lot of new benefits and upgrades too, like a new P-Core and low-powered E-Core architecture, but they have also removed hyper-threading for this generation. So this Intel Core Ultra 7 258V has 8 cores and 8 threads. The new Intel Arc Graphics 140V is based on the new XE2 architecture. It has 8 XE cores and I won't get into the specs of the GPU since I'm only interested in the results. The laptop also has 32 gigs of RAM at 85 33 mega transfers per second and half of the system memory can also be allocated to be the VRAM for that integrated graphics as well. We are testing this laptop with the highest performance possible and we can toggle this on ASUS laptops by just hitting FN and the F keys together. The full performance mode will literally let the fan run as fast as possible whenever needed. Let's head straight on and give you a recap on the gaming test that we did. So firstly comes Genshin Impact. This game is surprisingly taxing for a laptop with integrated graphics and we can actually play the game with medium graphical settings at 1080p resolution and still get about 60fps throughout the entire gameplay. However, there is a problem when it comes to this one particular part of the map. You see, in this desert area, it will crash 100% without fail. I don't know why this is happening as I have already updated Windows and also the Intel Arc GPU driver to the latest version and I tried this particular scene on another laptop with the exact same chipset and the same thing happened. So I can conclude that this is definitely an issue on either Intel or Microsoft side and it is not due to the laptop manufacturer's fault. Then comes Zenla Zone Zero, and this is the one game that I enjoy a lot these days, and it runs pretty good. It's mostly above 60 FPS, though it can sometimes dip below 60, and there are some frame dips here and there, but overall it is still a very playable experience. For Black Myth Wukong's benchmark, I've tried two combinations. The first one is with FSR, and the other one is with XESS. Surprisingly, the XESS just ran consistently worse compared to FSR counterpart. Yeah, AMD's FSR is working better on an Intel chip. This could be due to an older version of XESS on the Black Myth Wukong game itself, but I can't confirm this since the game doesn't tell us what version that it is using. I'm not talking about the overall image quality either, I'm just talking about pure frame rates here. Either XESS or FSR will still yield above 30 FPS at the lowest settings at 1080p, so that is definitely sufficient. If you want to play the game on this laptop, then you can actually go through from the beginning until the end, no problem. As for GTA 5, at the lowest graphical settings, we can get a very high average frame rates of around 120, but the frame rate can dip to somewhere around 33 sometimes. While the frame dips are huge, you can still get through the entire game at the lowest graphical settings and still get a very good overall experience. That is only a quick recap of the gaming test video that we've uploaded recently, so if you want to check that out, I'll leave you a link down in the description. One thing that I'm impressed is that the fans are not exactly that loud either. Since the temperature is hovering somewhere around 78 degrees Celsius on average and it can only sometimes spike up to 90 degrees Celsius, uh, yeah, the fans just don't need to be as noisy as possible.
These temperatures are still way below what we had on the previous generation of Intel chips. Now, after doing all of these tests, I can tell you one thing. This chip is just impressive. Intel puts a heavy emphasis on efficiency this generation and I think they managed to improve both the performance and the efficiency at the same time. Now, when we play games on this laptop, the wattage can go up to 28 watts and sometimes spike up to 37 watts. But the idle wattage, when you just idle at the desktop and do nothing, it can go as low as below 1 watt. Yeah, below a single watt, but only for a split second. It does mostly hover around 1 to 3 watts most of the time if you're just idling. That also translates to an amazingly good battery life. I use this laptop for scripting and research while listening to music and also some YouTube videos in a mix and honestly, I just can't finish the battery in just one day of work on this laptop. If I extrapolate my usage data, then I think the battery will last for about like 10 hours easily. We also locked the laptop's brightness to 100 nits and 120Hz refresh rate and did the PCMark 10's Modern Office Battery Life Benchmark. And this laptop yields 17 hours in that test. Seriously, that is just amazing. Also, by the way, the included charger for this laptop is a GAN charger and it is very portable. You can even swap out the cable for something else if you want to. Just make sure that it is compatible with the wattage output of this charging brick. And of course, if you have the travel adapters, you can change it to something else instead. Okay, enough about the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V chipset. Now, let's talk about the laptop itself. This, again, is the ASUS ZenBook S14 UX5406S. It's a 14-inch laptop with an amazing OLED screen, 2880 by 1800 pixels to be exact, and it is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, also goes up to 120Hz refresh rate. The color accuracy is great as before, as it covers 100% of both sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamuts. The maximum Delta E number should be an outlier since the average is so low. Its maximum brightness is at around 400 nits in SDR mode and around 600 nits in HDR mode. So overall, very good colors. However, this is not a touchscreen, so do keep that in mind because some other variants of this laptop is a touchscreen. The design of this laptop is more or less the same as the 16-inch version. It is available in two colors, Scandinavian white or in the Zumia grey color that we have right here. The laptop is really thin and slick and also lightweight at the same time, so portability 100 for this laptop. As for the keyboard, it is also the same as the ZenBook S16 that we have reviewed recently. The travel distance is a bit short, but otherwise still great to type on. It's responsive and very bouncy. As for the trackpad, it is also the same as well. The palm rejection is great while typing, but there is a brand new feature that you can either swipe at the top, the left, or the right edges to trigger different things, and this feature's palm rejection is just not that great. There are many times when I was typing, the volume just increased for no reason. As for the ports, we have double Thunderbolt 4 ports and a HDMI 2.1 TMDS, which is technically HDMI 2.0 and also an audio jack on the left side. There is one singular USB-A, 10 gigabits per second on the right side, and I think that is a good position. It does lack an SD card reader when compared with the larger 16-inch variant though. That is particularly important for people like me who deals with SD cards day in and day out. In terms of upgradability, there is, well, literally none. Everything is soldered onto the motherboard and the only thing that we can change here is the M.2 2280 SSD. There's nothing else of interest here other than maybe servicing the fans when it eventually gets clogged up with dust. And that's about it. The Lunar Lake architecture is an amazing step forward for Intel. Finally, they have realized that pushing for maximum performance is just, it's just not the way to go and they finally put an emphasis on efficiency and they did a really good job. They proved to the world that even x86 architecture can be as efficient and last as long as possible when compared to an ARM-powered laptop. And we just don't have to deal with app incompatibility issues as compared to ARM laptops. This ASUS ZenBook S14 itself is priced at 6,999 ringgit 
and you can buy it right now. And I think it is an amazing laptop. You should consider it if you're looking for a premium thin and light laptop. Do let us know. What do you think about this new generation of the Intel Core Ultra Mobile Processor Series 2? We'll also have a comparison with the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 in a future video as well. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching everyone and remember to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.